it's two o'clock and I'm calling to order the City of Tarpon Springs Code Enforcement Board for October 8th, 2015. We could please have the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Heavenly Father, send down your blessing on this meeting of the Code Enforcement Board. Give the board members a clear sense of duty and lead them to a faithful discharge of the same. Direct them in their deliberations at this meeting so that all things may be done to the glory of thy name and the welfare of the people of Tarpon Springs. This we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we have a roll call, please? Mr. Vesey is absent. Mr. Tobleski? Here. Ms. McCasey? Here. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mrs. Archer? Here. Mr. DeMathis? Here. Mr. Plunkett? Here. Mr. Charest? Here. And Andy Dan. Okay, the following are the hearing procedures. It is the intention of this board to promote, protect, and improve the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of Tarpon Springs by providing an equitable, effective, and inexpensive method of enforcing various codes within the city of Tarpon Springs. Any aggrieved party may appeal a final administrative order of this board to the circuit court. Such appeals shall be filed within 30 days of the execution of the order to be appealed. Florida Statute 286.0105 requires any party appealing a decision of this board to have a record of the proceedings to support such an appeal. The procedure with each case on its agenda is as follows. First, the city presents its witnesses and exhibits, after which the violator is able to ask the city witness, wit, uh, city's witnesses any specific questions regarding their testimony. Secondly, the violator is allowed to make a presentation and present any evidence or documents. Then the city can question the violator's witnesses. After both rounds of testimony, both on the part of the city and on the part of the violator, each party is asked to give a closing statement, first by the city and then by the violator. After these three steps are taken, this board then closes the public hearing portion of the case to discuss and take appropriate actions. Before we begin the public hearings, we will have all potential witnesses stand up and be sworn in by the secretary of the board. Do we have any witnesses present today? Two? Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is whole truth and none but the truth? I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Please turn off all cell phones. All right, our first case has complied, so we will go with case number two, 1006 Gushin Road. Go ahead, sir. Afternoon, I'm Officer Gasson, City of Tarpon Springs Police Department Code Inspector. Um, I'm here on case number 15-8000-316. The property address is 1006 Goshen Road. Listed property owners are Michael and Diane O'Connor. On July 24th of this year, I uh, conducted an inspection and found the front and rear yards were overgrown, vegetation and weeds were encroaching on the sidewalk and the street. Um, there's no house numbers present either on the house or the mailbox. Um, there's a hot tub stored in the back of the property on the west side, uh, along with some other trash and debris along that same side of the house, a stack of plastic chairs and a child's play set. The garage door also on the west side of that house is open and there's a a number of debris in it, although I didn't go up into the driveway to look at it. Uh, we first issued a courtesy letter followed by a notice of hearing, or I'm sorry, a notice of violation was issued. Um, we did send a notice of hearing 
uh, mailed first class and certified return receipt requested to the uh, listed property owners um, by Pinellas County Tax Collector and the property appraiser's website. Uh, we did not, uh, our certified return receipt was not received, um, but I did have contact with Mike O'Connor on the phone, talked to him a couple of days ago. Um, the, art, the, the lawn has been mowed, so I found that in compliance, so that's not before the board at this time. Um, what's before the board now is the fact that there's still trash and debris on the side of the house, uh, no house numbers. But I did speak to Mr. O'Connor. He, he did advise he has a cleanup crew coming. It should be here tomorrow to go ahead and clean up everything. Um, and I advised him I'm still continuing forward with the board case just in case it was uh, kind of like a red herring or something along those lines. So we still had everything in place. I advised him though if he had it all taken care of, uh, even with the board um, having a motion to go forward, there'll be no fines levied or anything like that if you got everything taken care of within uh, typically 10 days. Um, so at this point in time, uh, on my reinspection on the seventh, like I stated, the property's been mowed, uh, but there's still trash and debris on the side and no present house numbers. So I find them in violation of uh, section 822 840, 852, and uh, Pinellas County, or our reference to Pinellas County code for addressing under 150.00. <coughs> and I do have photos too. Okay. If you would pass those and could we put them in as evidence after they've. Do yes. we have a witness for this case present? Okay. House is vacant. The people, the people don't, the people don't live at the house. I, I don't believe so because there's been absolutely no change. I've never seen a car there. I also didn't ask him, but it does appear that the house is vacant because he said on the phone they never had a hot tub, so he believes somebody dumped it on the property. You can see in the pictures it's pretty far back at the back of the driveway, but it's clearly on his property. Okay. And do they? Where do they live, Connors? Oh, sorry. Connors. Where, where do they live, O'Connors? Um, oh, yeah, out of state, in Arizona. Okay, thanks. After the pictures are passed, is there any questions the board has for the officer? I'd like, uh, does anybody would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I'd like to make a motion. I move based on the testimony, evidence, facts presented in law that at the time of the alleged violation, sections 8-22, accumulation of trash or debris on private property, 8-40, duty of maintenance of prop, uh, private property, 8-52, nuisance prohibitions, and 150.00, addressing or enforced. The respondent has until the uh, 18th day of uh, October 2015 to come into compliance with the code sections or a fine of uh, $50 per day shall be imposed for each day thereafter the respondent remains in violation of said code Second. Sections. We have a second. Second. Any discussions? Could we please have a roll call vote, please? Yeah. Mr. Sherrier? Yes. Mr. Plunkett? Yes. Mr. DeMossis? Yes. Mrs. Archer? Yes. Mr. Kramer? No. Ms. Casey? Yes. Mr. Sigleski? Yes. <coughs> Okay, case number three is complied. Case number four, 1422 Tallahassee Drive. Uh, case number 15-8000405, as you stated, the address is 1422 Tallahassee Drive, uh, owned by Donald Ashland and John DeMell. On August 21st of this year, I conducted an inspection and found that the uh, pool water was green, unsanitary, the pool was uncovered, the house is uh, not occupied. Also, the uh, fence on the west side of the house, which is a wooden picket fence, was in poor condition, missing slats, and uh, general disrepair. There's also trash along the east side of the house, 
and I do have photographs to show the board. Um, a notice of violation was issued and a notice of hearing which was mailed first class with a return receipt requested to, and all of the notices were mailed to the property owner of record as determined by the Pinellas County Tax Collector and the county property appraiser. We did not receive a return receipt requested uh, and we've had no contact with the property owner. Although I did have contact with a Liz Grieve from a company called Safeguard Properties who's a code compliance specialist. Um, I've had email conversations with her. They're waiting on, um, or at the time, we're getting quotes and bids for uh, the various problems, the cleanup, the fence, and the pool. Um, I posted the property on September 26th of this year, and then on August 7th, I did a reinspection and saw that the pool was securely covered. Um, I'm sorry? October? Um, October 7th, sorry. October 7th of this year, um, yeah, two days ago, or yesterday. And the pool was covered. The fence is still broken, and there's still trash uh, about the property. And as I stated, I do have some photos for, for your viewing. You'll see the one picture of the pool, and that's the, the covered version of it. So that I found in compliance. Is there anyone here in the audience today for this case? Could you please come over here to the table, please? Sign in and give us your name and address, please. I think she'll have to be sworn in, too, won't she? No, she's an attorney. Oh, okay. she's an attorney. Yeah, she's fine. They don't have to tell the truth. They have to swear. <laughs> They're going to lie no matter what. They're yeah. governed by a different set of rules. <laughs> they already swear. <laughs> They're going to lie no matter what. <laughs> There's a comment that's funny. <laughs> supposed to trust her automatically, huh? That's right. <laughs> okay. You're not supposed to trust any witness. You're just supposed to hear what they have to say and give it whatever <laughs> weight you think is appropriate. If you would, just sit down, talk into the microphone. Give us your name, and if you could just give us the company you're representing them, please. Sure, absolutely. Andrea Padala, and I am local counsel here um, on behalf of the firm Pop Popkin. What was the name again, please? Padala, P as in Paul, I, D like David, A, L, A local counsel on behalf of Popkin and Rosaller, and I am here um, just monitoring. This matter was in foreclosure. It appears from the docket that the foreclosure action was dismissed back in March, um, but it's my understanding that Officer Gaston has been in contact with um, a Liz Grieve of Safeguard Properties who was requesting bids to be submitted for Fannie Mae for review, so I will relay this information back to the firm to relate to Fannie Mae. Is Fannie Mae, excuse me, is Fannie Mae still hold Safeguard on this property or still with Doug at this point? Correct, and it was in foreclosure, um, but like I said, it appears from the docket that the foreclosure was dismissed back in March. Do you have any questions for Officer Gaston? Um, she's She's, oh, not, she's, a little, okay. she's not a party. She's just giving you some information about who she represents. Okay. So she doesn't have the right to ask yeah, Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. And one thing I'd just add, it, the, the house is vacant. There's nobody occupying it at this point. Oh, then to your understanding, the improvements or the corrections like with the pool, has that been done through Liz Grove with the specialist team? It Do would solely know? be an assumption because she stated she had to get bids for cleanup bids for the fence, okay. bids for the pool, and I actually drove by a few days before and saw them working on it. So it sounds like the other two bids either haven't come in or haven't been approved or whatever the circumstances are behind it, but as of this point, it's not in compliance. And we have no time frame knowing when those other bids possibly will be coming in? I do not, other okay. than they're well aware of this board hearing. Okay. Okay, at this time, then we'll close that. No, I, oh, I, do you have any questions? Does the board yes, have I'd any like questions? To, I'd like to ask a question of the uh, officer, please. Mm -hmm. uh, you indicated that the fence is still broken. Is there any chance or of, of, of potential danger with the pool, with, with a child getting in there? In my opinion, the way the pool's been secured, it's it's got a rather rigid two-by-four structure. It's got um, not chicken wire, but um, uh, probably <laughs> two-by-four square wire. And then Visqueen on top of that. So you so say it's unlikely? I would say it's very unlikely. All right. Um, although it's possible with all the trash and debris that's in the backyard for
for a child to get into the backyard. Okay, I'm, I'm more concerned about the about the pool. Understand? Than, okay, I feel a little bit better about the situation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? If you would please submit those photos for as, as evidence. Yes, sir. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I move based on testimony, evidence, facts, and presented and law that at the time of the alleged violations, section 8 40 3603 of the Code of Ordinance of the City of Toppen Spring was in force. <coughs> the respondent has until, I don't have a calendar. Respondent has until October 23rd, 2015, to come into compliance with the code section for a fine of $50 per day shall be imposed uh, uh, for each day thereafter the respondent remains in violation of the said code sections. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Sherry? Mr. Plunkett? Yes. Mr. DeMasses? Yes. Mrs. Archer? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Casey? No. Mr. Sobleski? Yes. It's a motion carried. Jerry, don't forget discussion. Don't forget discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up, case number five, 482 Kiwi Street. Uh, case number 15 436 This is a repeat violator of city codes 840 and 852. The address is 482 Kiwi Street. It's a vacant lot. Uh, I have the parcel number if you wish. It's 1327 15 83898 003 0160. Listed property owner is a Fred Collins. Previous case in 13-8000581 is where the, it was established on October 10th of the year 2013. On September 3rd of this year, conducted an inspection, the lot was grossly overgrown. And as noted before, it was a repeat violator uh, from October 10th of 2013. Issued a notice of hearing as a repeat violator, mailed first class and certified return receipt requested to the listed property owners via the Pinellas County tax collector and property appraisers website um, did not receive return receipt requested from the property owner and have had no contact with the property owner on September 26th of this year I posted the property and conducted a reinspection yesterday and it has been mowed it did come into compliance on September 14th under the repeat uh, violator so it was basically out of compliance from September 3rd to September 14th um, and I find it in violation of city codes 840 and 852 as a repeat violator. And I have no photos. Are there any witnesses today here for this case? Okay. Is there any discussion or questions that the board would at, like to ask? Yeah, I have a question for the officer. Uh, Having been in, in violation between the 3rd and the 14th, is there any fine involved in this? Yes, it, since it was a repeat violator, it started to accrue fines on the And do we know 3rd. what that was on a daily basis? You're going to fix that. That's your fix. job oh, you're, today. You're, you're we we, we that. make that judgment. Yeah. I see. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Well, I we'll then we set that, that, I understand. That's that. right. Yes, sir. Any other discussion or questions for the city? Or discussions uh, for the board? One more. Do these, where does the owner live? I think that one's in that one's in California, out of state. Okay, thanks. I didn't understand what council said when you, you were answering him. Yeah, the, the question was, has the board already acted upon to determine what the dollar amount per day for a repeat violation would be? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no, you're going to do that today. If you find that there is a violation, you're going to set a dollar amount anywhere from zero to $500 a day for the 11 days that the property remained in non-compliance if you find it to be in violation. So you're going to fix that dollar amount by way of the motion that you make. I don't mean <coughs> fix it as in correct it. I mean you're going to 
have said it. But they've been fined before? Were they've they been found in before? violation before. You haven't heard testimony as to whether or not that there was actually a, a fine that was incurred. I, if you have that question for the officer, maybe he'd be able to respond. I have a question. Is she, did you want the answer to yes. that? Yes. Yeah. It, it was previously established, so it does not appear there were any previous fines. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Plunkett, do you have a question? Yes, of the officer. Uh, I noticed in this case we have the IPMC 303-1.1, the swimming pool, hot tub, spa. What is the problem with that? That was the prior case. That was the that was the last case. Yeah, yeah and case. yeah, that was the previous case. This one's strict. It's a vacant lot that needed to be mowed. Okay. I'll make a motion. Any other questions or discussions? Could I have a motion, please? I move based on the testimony, evidence, facts presented in law that the respondent was in violation of sections 8-40 and 8-52 of the Tarpon Springs City Code of Ordinances from September 3rd, 2015 until September 14th, 2015. The initial, okay. Uh, a fine of $50 per day for 11 days is imposed for a total fine of $550. Second. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Sherry A. Yes. Mr. Plunkett. Yes. Mr. DeMossis. Yes. Mrs. Archer. Yes. Mr. Kramer. Yes. Ms. B. Casey. Yes. And Mr. Sebleski. Yes. The motion carries. Okay, next case, uh, <coughs> case number six for 474 Kiwi Street. Yes, sir, this is uh, case number 15 dash 8 0 0 0 0 4 37 474 Kiwi Street, the neighbor to 482 Kiwi, which we just discussed. Parcel number 13 27 15 838 98 0 0 3 0 1 7 0. Listed owner is a Mark Palazzo, an out of state resident. Um, on September 3rd, I conducted an inspection. The, the lot was grossly overgrown. Um, I'm bringing this before the board to be established as it had nine prior cases back to 2010 for the same violations. Um, so notice of violation and notice of hearing were mailed first class to the uh, um, via return receipt requested to all listed property owners via the Pinellas County Tax Collector and the Pinellas County Property Appraisers website. We did receive return receipt and we have had no contact from the property owner on September 26th of this year, I posted the property, and yesterday I did conduct a reinspection, and it was mowed. It actually came into compliance on September 14th when I conducted the inspection on the, the neighbor or the adjoining lot, 482. Um, it, as stated, the property is now in compliance, but I would like to uh, have the board establish it, so any future violations, which seem to kind of be the history, uh, will be able to start assessing fines immediately. Any questions or discussions? Oh, I'm sorry. Is there anyone here in the audience that is representing this property? No. Okay. Is there any discussion, questions uh, from the board for the city? None noted. Uh, could we have a motion, please? I move based on the testimony, evidence, facts presented in law that the respondent was in violation of code 8-40 and 8-52. The property is now in compliance. This motion is just to establish. Second. Do we have any discussions? Okay, at this time I'd like I, to have... I, I, I just oh. want to ask... Uh, no, that's right. I'll save my question for, for uh, later. Uh, it doesn't necessarily apply to this case. I, I was drawing the request. Okay. Then at this time, could we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Sherrier? Yes. Mr. Plunkett? Yes. Mr. Zamasis? Yes. Mrs. Archer? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. 
Ms. Casey? Yes. Mr. Sibleski? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, next case number seven in reference to 601 Sugar Mill Road. Mr. This is case number 15-8000479 as stated, 601 Sugar Mill Road. Property owners listed as Gina and Joseph Crochetti. They, this is an occupied dwelling and I actually did have contact with a female at the residence the other day. On September 22nd of this year, I uh, noticed the property is grossly overgrown and not being maintained regularly. Uh, this is another case I'm bringing before the board to be established due to its prior history. I have seven prior cases, two in 2015, three in 2014. And uh, for that reason, I'd like this property also established. Notice of hearing and, and notice of violation were mailed first class return receipt requested. All notices were mailed via the uh, listed owner on the Pinellas County Property Appraiser and Tax Collector website. Uh, we did not receive a return receipt and we've had Prior to yesterday, I've had no contact with the owner. Um, I posted the property on September 26th. I conducted a reinspection yesterday uh, where the, the property is still out of compliance. And I do have some photographs. And when I spoke to the female, uh, she stated that she's waiting on a landscaping company. She couldn't elaborate why the landscaping company didn't appear the seven prior times either. But um, I advised her I'm still bringing it before the board. She's not present here to discuss the case in any way, shape, or form. And this is another situation where I'd like to gain compliance by the uh, owner of the property themselves rather than having to have you guys force them to. So uh, just to make it clear to me, uh, you're asking it to be established? Or yes, and it is also in violation of 840 and 852 as of this point. Yes. Right. So as I stated, since the case is not in compliance right now, and I also am establishing it. It's twofold because they did not come into compliance, as you can see in the photos that I took, I think, yesterday. You need to just treat this like any other case that's been brought to you. If it's not in compliance, you need to treat it like any any regular case. It's more than just being established. It's you, they're seeking a fine too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, yes, officer, uh, I noticed that the grass was tall, and so what is the other? You have nuisance prohibition. What is that? in comparison to the maintenance of the private property? They're, they're all coupled together. The uh, not maintaining your private property is under 840, and then because of not maintaining, it becomes a nuisance condition to the city and to uh, neighboring residents. Okay, <coughs> so, so that's what it, okay. Yeah, so it I, can, I didn't know if that was trash. It can lead something. to vermin and rodents and yeah, things like that, that, and that's the nuisance condition. That's fine. And the house is vacant? No, it's occupied. By and I spoke to the resident, a resident. I do not know if they're the owner, okay. but I spoke to a female resident who came running outside when I was taking pictures yesterday. Okay. She alluded to the fact because she said, I'm trying to get the landscaping company was supposed to be there yesterday. Obviously, they were late. Is there anyone here today representing that property? Okay. Any other questions or discussions from the board for the city? Six oh one Sugar Mill Road. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion, please? I will. All right. I move based on the testimony, evidence, facts presented in law that at the time of the alleged violation, section eight dash forty and eight dash fifty two of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Tarpon Springs were in force. Respondent has until the uh, the 15th day of October 2015 to come into compliance with the code section or a fine of $50 per day shall be imposed for each day thereafter the respondent remains in violation of said code section. Second. Second. All kinds of seconds. No, we got that. Is there any discussion? <coughs> hey, this time I do. Okay. I have a, Go I don't ahead. Know I'm out of order or anything, but no. The previous cases were any? Did they come before the board? 
You mean the ones that are listed from the three yeah, or the two and fifteen? Four and fourteen? No, they never they never made it all the way to code board. I think one of my previous cases from this year got a notice of violation as far as it went. Courtesy letter, then the notice of violation. So they basically got about a month um, from the from when it was first observed to the time they finally came into compliance. Okay. So it's not a repeat violator because it never came before the board. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Um, can you give me just a second? Because I'm, I'm thinking that they just keep missing this. <laughs> and so maybe I'd like to amend my motion. How do I? Can I do that, Tom? Yes, if you made the motion, you'd amend it. Okay. I'd like to amend my motion to $100 a day. Second that one. Okay. We have a motion for $100 a day. That was a good it one. has been seconded. <laughs> Do we have any other discussions? Okay, could we have a roll call, please? Mr. Sherry? Yes. Mr. Plunkett? What was the date again, Wanda? Um, the 15th, 15th of October. And that's $100? I vote no. Mr. DeMazes? Did you say DeMazes? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Uh, yes. Mrs. Archer? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Ms. B. Casey? Yes. Mr. Sebleski? Yes. The motion carries. It's up to you. You're in control of the meeting. If you want to ask him now, you can do that. Excuse me, sir. Uh, that is it, the conclusion as far as our meeting with non-compliance, but what are you here for? What what uh, case? Riverside. There's nothing on the agenda for it. Not on the agenda. We have nothing on this agenda for Riverside. Were you told that it was today, sir, for the code no, enforcement? Sir, I, I didn't get it. I wasn't told. Riverside is not on the Can't do it quasi-judicial hearing if, right. if you have a code enforcement case the board can hear it but they just can't take testimony on an outstanding issue on a property because that, if that property comes back before the code enforcement board it may be prejudicial to what is happening at that that time but it's not going to do you any good no sir. in fact no. It's, it's actually going to it could Other. very well hurt you because if we have to disqualify ourselves we might have voted for you but that's right. Be able to okay. Other than the fact of you venting your frustrations, but it it could it could come back to bite you. Then wait, we 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 have a comment after the meeting. Just to stick around ten more minutes, and then public comment. Wouldn't that be? Public that comments be? can be taken. Then. Yes, public comments can be taken at that time, sir. Okay, we have affidavits of compliance. Would anybody like to make a motion for the affidavits of compliance? I move, I move we accept the affidavits of compliance in case 15-8000436 in case 15-8000437 in case 10-200075. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. All right. Next on the agenda is reduction in fine for property 1412 Lonesome Pine Lane. Has everyone had a chance to read? the report from the city in reference to the reduction of fine from the individual and the reduction in fine from the city's office in reference to what the fine should be can we can we ask what the fine is what it was it's $83,800 83,000 $800. Yikes. <laughs> okay. 
Is there anyone here representing this property? Okay, sir. He cannot speak. He cannot speak. No. Thank you for attending. <laughs> um, I have to agree with what the city is proposing. Because also the city has attached a letter. I, does everybody have that letter and has everybody read it? Yes. The city is requesting that only a fine of $750 be imposed to cover the city's costs and expenses. Do we have any discussion on this? Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion. I move that the fine of $83,800 in the case of citation number 10 2000000075 be reduced to $750. This reduction will occur upon payment of the stated reduced amount of payment within 60 working days of this order. Uh, uh, failure. Uh, made within 60 working days of this order. Failure to pay the reduced fine will result in the original amount of $83,800. Second. Do we have any discussion? Why do we reduce so much? Because well, they happened? didn't live there. This was the city put in all new sewer systems and the previous owners didn't hook up to it. So they bought the house and they had to hook up to it, but they're paying this fine that's been running for years. And so, you know, they fixed the house up too. The fine went came with the house. Yeah. Right, and they yeah. weren't really aware of it through the mortgage company or the, was it Fannie Mae or whoever owned the property. Mm -hmm. They were not made aware of the existing fines when they bought the property. And after talking with the city, the city has agreed to just $750 to cover city expenses and paperwork. I just have a question, and it's, I may be out of line, but when they buy a home, doesn't, isn't there somewhere on there that's supposed to say that there are fines going to it? Yep. I would assume that's maybe one of the reasons why the city decided to only charge them 750 because full disclosure was not made at the time of the final mm -hmm. signing from what I got from reading their appeal and what the city has given. Nobody would ever buy that property if they had to pay that 83000 Yeah, because you got another 83000 let alone what you paid for the house. Looking bad. And if I may, that the full disclosure should have been made to you since it wasn't, you can go back to your broker and title company that didn't tell you but nevertheless the place is fixed up and it's it's up to code it up yeah. and yeah. it was just a question I just wanted to do we have any other questions or discussions could I have a vote please Sherry A yes Mr. Plunkett yes Mr. Um, Mr. DeMossis yes Mrs. Archer? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Casey? Yes. Mr. Sublet? Yes. Okay. The last thing on our agenda is to reapprove August and September's minutes. I'll make a motion to approve August and September's minutes. No, is, do we have a second? Second. Do we have any questions or anything in reference to August and September's minutes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, at this time, uh, I will close the formal part of Tarpon Springs Code Enforcement meeting for October the 8th. I thought you were going to have. Now I have. No, we have to keep the meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. The meeting's not adjourned. Yeah, if, if, if he wants My to speak before the board. You've you done you? great, by the way. Did I yes. really? Yeah. You did very you well, Jerry. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so Stress. It, but now we, we, the meeting's public. not adjourned. Yeah, we've got Would public you like comments? to come up, please, sir? Sit at the table. Uh, thank thank you. you. Thanks for fixing the house up. Get that check in so we don't have to. If you would just talk into the microphone, 000. sir. 
Can you hear me? And, yes, and give us Thank your you. statements, your concerns, comments, or whatever, please. But do not mention a specific property. If you have general comments, you can make them, but if it's with regard to a property that you're involved with, we're not going to be able to hear that today. Yes, sir. Okay. Really, I'm going to tell you guys, it's, it's almost personal. Um, being growing up here, as long as I have, I graduated in 94. This town has been good to me. I've been good to it, to a state where you see the emotion. Oscar Gasson's been a role model, you know, someone you can look up to because he does his job. And that's it. Ain't no favors, nothing. He does his job. And I, and I learned from that. But he hit me pretty hard last Saturday and taught me a pretty hard lesson. So that's why I'm really here. And like I said, I would like to see my police in maybe one of y'all's shoes in the future. I'm sorry. Uh, because I that. have that much care for this city. Can't hear him. He said he would like to be up here on the board in the future one of these days because he has that much respect for the city and for what the board does. Okay. Go ahead. Well, it's a volunteer position. <laughs> You know, uh, and I apologize, I, I'm, I am a kind of emotional. I was pretty close to Charlie and kind of been on the brain. But I um, just want you guys to know, I've probably put you through a lot of paperwork and headaches dealing with my shenanigans. And uh, I, w I want to be a, a citizen that you guys are proud of not one that you're, geez, not this guy, okay. you know? And um, I, I, I have a problem of up here, if you guys could read my mind, you'd think I'm a genius. Coming out of my mouth is another story. So if you guys bear with me, I will uh, get, get an understanding to you. Um, I wanna be in compliance. I don't want my name going through your paperwork and being a headache and that guy. I, I want you to be the guy when you drive by my house. You wave and you say, hey, Dave, you know, doing good. Out there picking the trash up, cleaning the dead fish and the oysters off the bridge and, you know, something to be proud of, not a nuisance or something that is taking up our time or Officer Gasson's time with stuff that really should be watched out for our city to protect it because that's what I do. I protect it. And... You know, there was a big shakeup when the Georgies were murdered. And uh, I'm trying to teach my 13-year-old daughter, don't be scared. You know, this is a safe city. Sir, would you speak into the mic, please? I'm sorry. Oh, you. you know, that this is a safe city. We don't have to worry about crazy guys that are going to come and kill you in your sleep. And uh, it's th that's pretty much it. I just uh, I want you guys to know that I'm here. You need me. All you gotta do is call me, send Gasson over. Uh, he, Lord knows he knows where I live. And um, and just a side note, I, I can't remember the name of the street. If you're going down Bayshore and you make a left to go to the soccer field, what's that street that Tarpon Middle's on? In between Bayshore and uh, Creamware Bayou. When you turn to go down there, there's a, a double property there that I'm cleaning up, it's just covered in vines and thorns. So it's kind of beating me up. I got a helper uh, over there, the jet ski repair guy. He's, he's giving me a hand. So that, that in a couple of days will be all cleaned up. And uh, thank you very much for hearing me out and letting me get this off my chest because unfortunately, uh, 2000, I lost both my boys. They drowned at Safety Harbor Apartment Complex. And then uh, six months later, my dad, in this past May, five, six years, my mom's been gone. So I'm very tight with the city because I have family here. And like I said, it's been good to me. I want to be good for it. Thank so you, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in, Thanks. taking time out of your day to come and make these comments and for your support. Thank you very much. And best wishes may I also, you. Yes. May I also Bye. add one thing, sir? Do you, do you know that there are several boards here in the city that you could become a part of 
that are very, very instrumental in keeping this town the way you say it should be. Very, of them, very many of them, planning and zoning, code enforcement, uh, finance committee, there's a lot of committees that uh, need help. You can get those right right from the city clerk I, I office. I think you may well be probably need to be fine. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. Yeah. Is there any other discussion or comments that the board has at this time? Yes, I'd like to bring up a point. I started bringing up at what probably would have been a uh, inopportune point, but I, I notice sometimes on our votes that we get a, a mixed vote or, or somebody is a no or a yes, when I think that it, it's not necessarily that we're not in agreement, but I think sometimes the issue is more that the fine is inappropriate. And what I'd want to just wonder is... You need to talk into the mic, Carl, so we can hear you. Is there a time, is there a time uh, during our discussion when it would be appropriate to indicate before we make a motion uh, and have some discussion about the, what we feel the price should be? Right okay, after because the I think half, I, I think in almost every case, it's a situation where there's a full consensus or a full complete agreement on, on, on almost all of these cases, one way or the other, but that the, the naysayers are because they either feel the fine is too too small or, or far uh, too little. So I'm wondering if maybe what we should do on on these cases is at least when before we propose a motion is possibly have some more discussion about what an appropriate fine might be. We have done that in the past. I think, Wanda, well, you remember we've done well, that. No, actually, after the second, after the motion is made in the second, there's discussion. And at that point, right. you can right. say, look. But it doesn't seem more that we ever bring that up. Well, but Jerry forgot to ask if there was Couple. discussion. Yes. And I voted no. Can I so did say I. this? Yeah. OK. I voted no today because I felt like we were kind of making too short of a period. You know, seven to eight days on some of these I thought was just a little bit short. That's why I voted no, and I would have said that had we been And I would have discussion. said the reason I voted no for yours, Wanda, was I thought that 100 was too much. Well, and the re yeah, and, and had know, we discussed they passed. Oh, that, oh, so um, I, I, it's just that there were so many um, violations. That's why I went that way. I just but find that, that sometimes we, it, it's almost like I'm sitting here with a sense that we're all in agreement here. It, it's just how much, you know, how much is it worth as opposed to uh, that, that somebody says, mm -hmm. no, the, the rest of the people are completely out of whack. And I just wondered that, that maybe we would get, may, maybe that should be something that should be brought out. I'm gonna try to bring it out myself and I just wanted to, to, to point out that, that maybe starting the, the next meeting, if I make a motion, I might try to inform people if, that, if it's appropriate is this a pro as to what is this I legal? suggest the fine might be. We're legal to do legal? that? Oh, absolutely. And, and, okay. and Wanda's hit it right on the head. The, the time to talk about either compliance dates, the fine amount, whether you consider all the violations that have been listed are in compliance or not in compliance, well, any of those things, that's the discussion period after the motion is made. Yep. I just don't, I, I, I very seldom remember us actually discussing, you know, we kind of almost take a figure. I know the only times I haven't voted in favor of something is because of the size of the fine as opposed to whether, it wasn't whether it was proven or not, mm -hmm. so. Okay. Notated, thank you. Any other discussions? I'd just like to concur with what he said. I felt that way a lot today, too, you know, when I was voting. I, I, the fine didn't fit well for different reasons with me, so I'm glad we didn't have a discussion. I just wanted to say I, I want to give kudos to the acting chairman. <laughs> great job we did today. Blind hog finds an acorn every <laughs> once in a while. Thank you, sir. Appreciate okay. it. Anything else? Then I officially close this meeting of the Code Enforcement Board. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're going to drive by Justin Thompson. Hmm. Make sure he's alive. I don't even know where he lives. <laughs> is his address in here I'm with here. all the other paperwork? <laughs>